My name is Angela. I am the product marketing manager for Session Replay here at Century. Um, and I am joined today by Elias, uh, who is a senior software engineer here at Century as well um, on the Session Replay team. And um, in the first half of this workshop, Elias is going to walk us through, um, you know, an overview of what Session Replay is here at Century. Um, and he's going to go through a product demo and then um, walk through a few of the new features that we've recently launched and give you all a sneak peek into what's coming up next. And then in the second half, uh, we are joined here today by um, a customer panel. We have Ben Browning from Skillshark, Gus from Div Brand, and Josiah from Boost Point. Yes, uh, who are waving hello. Um, and in the second half here, we're just going to go through um, a Q&A session with our customers who, you know, they've been kind of tinkering around um, with session replay, some of them um, since the beta period. Uh, so they have some really interesting like use cases and tidbits and advice to share. Uh, so yeah, that'll be the second half of this workshop. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it on to Elias. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining today. Uh, so let's just jump into it. So what is session replay? And kind of in my own words, you know, I, I like to think of, you know, session replay, it's not just simply a video recording of a, of a user session of, of your website. It's actually a, more of like a one-to-one -one reproduction of the user session. But you also get dev tools included so i think uh, somebody else has kind of said before that it's time traveling with dev tools uh, in terms of you know front-end development and then and uh, as we kind of get into the next slides and and the demo you'll kind of see how that unfolds next slide please So yeah, as I just had kind of mentioned, it's uh, session replay is like a dev tools like experience. So what do you get with that? You'll get the actual playback view. So it's video like, but again, it's not a video. You actually get full DOM access with an inspection. Um, so you could right click on any element that you see there in the replay and, and actually inspect what uh, what element was there. You can see the classes and all that. So I'll give you a demo of what that looks like. Um, you get the event timeline and the breadcrumbs. Um, so you'll get these kind of nice indicators. You can see them there at the top a little bit, but I'll go a little bit more in depth later. But each of these little blips is uh, is an event that occurred during the, the replay. Uh, I like to think of them as points of interest. Um, you'll get the network request and responses, which is pretty neat. So not only uh, will you get just the, the URLs that were uh, requested and along with the responses, but we've actually just released uh, request and response payloads and API headers. So Happy to give you a demo of that. Um, DOM events, of course, you'd expect to see those. And console logs, of course, you'd expect to see those. There is more. Um, next slide, please. Of course, Session Replay being a Century product, uh, it's connected to the Century ecosystem, which I think is huge for us um, because it's kind of your Century workflow, but with an extra lens. Uh, um, so you can go from, you know, a transaction summary and see any re users that were uh, kind of within this transaction and replay their user session or go from an issue and then to a replay. So you kind of get like this instruction manual on how to reproduce an error uh, or see, you know, maybe there's some bad user experience that's happening uh, along with the error. So um, it, it's, it's a pretty wicked cohesive product, product when, you, when you look at it as a, as a full ecosystem. Next slide. I think you missed one. Should be slide nine. There you go. So how are we different? So we're made for developers. So again, like we're not just giving you a, a replay of what happened with the actual uh, user session. We're giving you all the kind of dev tools and the breadcrumbs that come along with it. So by developers, for developers, first and foremost, um, we have take a privacy first approach to session replay. Um, so input masking, text masking, you know, private information, you know, that we don't want to be surfaced through replay. We actually 
uh, mask it at the source. So when you go through your client SDK uh, init initialization, you can configure it in such a way where maybe you just want to mask, um, you know, a couple fields that are sensitive or mask everything, or maybe not mask anything at all. So all that's configurable at the uh, SDK level. So, you know, by the time it hits us on the century side, we, we don't actually see any of it. Um, we have a couple of ways of sampling. I think this is another unique factor for us. So you can say, hey, you know what? We just launched this new feature. We want to sample you know, all the sessions that are happening. We just want to capture a replay, whether an error happened or not. But I think where our huge value add in is that we actually sample 100, we can sample up to 100% on errors. So this is, again, this is configurable on the SDK level. Um, and you can say, hey, anytime an error occurs, I want to capture a, a session replay. So super wicked ability that we're able to do this. And then again, you get it from the whole century point of view. So you go right from your issues to your replays, replays to issues and vice versa. Um, and again, it, it's, you set it up in, in a couple of minutes. I'm going to show you uh, kind of what the, the snippet looks like in my demo. Um, but let's get into what's new. We just shipped a, a couple extra features to the session replay experience. So back in errors, um, I think this is pretty huge. And I, I, I so far, um, I've really enjoyed the experience of triaging issues that have kind of surfaced on the back end, but they're also accompanied by a replay. So essentially, we have tracing that could go across the stack. So you could go from your front end to your back end. And within that trace, we can actually associate a replay to a particular uh, back end error. And as you'll see when I get into the demo, I'm calling from the front end. And the error actually occurs in the back end. You know, for whatever reason, I'm not able to connect to an external service, or maybe I'm not able to connect to the database. Uh, but I, you could actually see how that error propagates from the front end to the back end and kind of back to the front end when uh, you get like a, a toast. Um, so I like to also think of this as, you know, you get an instruction manual for how to recreate an error. There's often times where maybe you're looking at a back end error where it's like, I don't know how the user did this. But with replays now, you can finally see what they did to get into that situation. Um, network uh, request and response. So I kind of mentioned this already previously, but we've now included uh, request API headers, the request parameters body, as well as the response. So this is super helpful if you're, uh, if you're looking into making sure that your API contracts are actually being called uh, as how your contract has uh, uh, has specified it. I find this really helpful for problematic requests. Maybe there's certain combination of uh, combinations of your parameters that you're feeding into your API that's actually causing maybe a slow transaction. And and now with session replays, you could very easily see it from the uh, the user session itself. So huge uh, huge value out of here. And again, it's 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 we're trying to get us close to having you know dev tools. Uh, on replay, so time traveling dev tools. And, and I think that uh, a lot of developers are familiar with the network tab in, in Chrome. And, and you know, I think this is a huge ad for us here. Next slide. And then of course, search by DOM clip. Um, so this is super useful if, if you find yourself like a good, it, this is more of like a scenario based value add I find. Um, imagine that you have an e-commerce site and you have a sales funnel, maybe for a particular page or just a, you know the checkout button in general and you're and you're noticing that you know maybe the sales were down or maybe there are specific errors on this button uh, you can now search by uh, a click id or any other type of query selector and narrow in on user sessions and from there you could then jump to uh, particular errors that may have happened within the replay or just look at the user experience that the user is going through a super helpful feature as well cool so demo time uh, I'm going to share my screen. I think we're good. Cool. So, um, as I mentioned, it, it's pretty simple to set up um, Sentry. I, all I've done here on, on the front end is I've uh, installed Sentry React SDK. So, I have a demo application that I've developed for this workshop uh, that we're going to go through. And you'll you'll see kind of the, the replay uh, propagate right away, but you would call Sentry init. You try to keep this at the uppermost layer of your application. So I've called this in main. Uh, you pass in your DSN, your integrations in this case. We have browser tracing, 
and replay. So of course, if you want to enable session replay, it's as simple as adding this, this plugin. Um, as I mentioned, we have network requ request and response payloads. In order to actually configure that, I've, I've defined uh, basically a, an allow list of URLs that I want to be capturing uh, request and response payloads. And then on these two bottom attributes that I've highlighted, this is where you define your sample rate. So I don't know if you recall, but I said that you could sample up to 100% on, uh, on errors. That's what I'm doing here on this bottom line here on line 23. And then on line 22, I'm saying, I also just want to capture all user sections in this case. This is a demo app. I think in production, most people will probably fine tune these values. And maybe some people just say, hey, I don't want to sample any user sessions. I just want 100% sampling on, uh, on error. And that's completely valid as well. So this is the scenario. Uh, I have a replay bug conference that's coming up here. And I've deployed an application. Uh, and there's a number of talks going on here. So I have happy path coding, blank screen of death, sloth tips on speed. I can't imagine that's fast. Uh, full stack errors. There's this interesting one called dead click and learn to throw, which I'm assuming this guy here is just going to throw. So if I click on this guy here, I want to register to happy path coding. I'm the user now and I'm going to just kind of come in here and pop in some information, like enter and I've registered for the event. Cool. So happy path coding, I've hit the happy path. I, it worked just as I expected. Um, let's try out possibly full stack errors. So let's go down to full stack errors and see what happens here. So my email is already there. So I'm just going to hit register. Looks like I hit an error. So um, doesn't really give me much on the front end, just says I failed to register an event. But I'm sure if I could get access to the console logs of this session, I could probably see the error. Uh, what else do we got here? Dead click, let's give her a go. Nothing's actually happening. So this is kind of interesting. If if I didn't have session replay, I would actually have no way of knowing that the user is facing this frustration. I'll show you how this replayed uh, once we get into the session replay. Uh, what, do, what do we got here? So slow tips. Let's do some sloth tips. Let's see. I'd expect this to be pretty slow, taking quite a while. Still taking quite a while. This is another thing too, where you know we would definitely be able to see that a user is in, kind of facing a slow transaction with their existing performance monitoring, but we're not able to see the impact on, on, on the user experience. And in that case, we just kind of showed a spinning loader for quite a while until anything happened. So let's try to see if we can learn to throw. Of course, something bad happens here. And then let's go to this blank screen of death. So if I click on blank screen of death and try to register, absolutely nothing. And this is kind of like the worst case scenario as a front end developer when you ship an application. Let's we'll pop into Sentry and see if I could capture this replay. Um, I have a pre recorded one here. I figure live demos sometimes don't always go as planned. Um, but let's replay here and see what happens. The users come into the application. It looks like they're trying to register. I have all these interesting um, items up here on the timeline. So I have my breadcrumbs that I can kind of just scroll through and see what's going on here. So let's continue playing. Looks like I got this really long network request. So I'm going to be interested to see what happens when we get there. Users in inputting their information. And notice that everything here is completely um, private. I can't actually see what the text the user is uh, inputting into into their, their, their box or any text for that matter. However, if I wanted to, to show some of the text here for let's say um, the event card, I would be able to configure that in the SDK and it would be shown here. But in this case, I've decided that everything is just gonna be private and we're private by default. Let's continue playing. The user clicks on the button. I can see the success, so very similar. It's almost a one-to-one -one, um, as how we had uh, developed it. And you'll actually notice that the animations for the card works as well in the replay. Uh, as you hover over, the card kind of pops up. And if you click it, it kind of recesses. Um, so this looks like the slow transaction. Let's have a look here. So I'm just going to pause real quick. And I'm going to pop into my network tab and see if I can find this. Because it looks like it's right here in my timeline. I'm actually just going to short uh, sort duration. and this looks like this is probably it, 12 seconds. So I'll click on it 
and let's have a look to see what's going on here. So I'm on the front end right now. It looks like, yep, yeah, okay, they've tried to request um, loft talk. So they're trying to um, register to this event. And if I look at the response, it's successful and it's registered, but you know, I can't really get much here from the front end. So if I go over here to the trace tab, I should also be able to see what's going on. So this is where it gets really interesting. I've connected this to our backend service um, and I can actually click in here and I can see, yep, yeah, okay. So here's the click that was dispatching this fetch request. And here's my post request to API register. I could click into this, um, this transaction and actually go to this event. And so if I go to this event, it takes me off to the performance page which would be the transaction um, of this request and the trace as it would go through the stack. So if I had additional services that this was re reaching out to, it would, you would actually see it propagate uh, throughout. Um, and of course, on this view, I could link directly to the replay uh, as it occurred. So super valuable. I could, I could then hand this off to uh, maybe a backend engineer. I could look into it myself to see what's going on with this slow replay. Let's continue with our replay and see what's going on. Clicking around. Just kind of looking. What are we doing here? It looks like I've encountered a, a, a particular error and I can see it here in my breadcrumbs. So failed to communicate with event service. This looks interesting. Let's see if I can find it. If I come under Let's just go check out our issues. I can actually see here in the top right-hand corner that I have two errors. Looks like I have three that belong to the React project and then two that belong to the back end. So if I click on my issues, I'll get a group of errors that um, these belong to. And I could actually see what happened here. So failed to communicate with event service. This should be interesting. So that, again, this belongs to the back end service. Um, I could click into this, go to my back end error page and see what's going on. Of course, because this is a demo app, I've just captured the ID here. You could see backend errors and I've just thrown the error, but you now get code level insights into a backend error from a front end project, which is super, super beneficial when you're triaging these types of issues. Not only that, you could see that this is the uh, most recent replay that this had occurred on. And I also get access to the remaining replays that this uh, issue group has, um, that these replays belong to. So super helpful to kind of go through and see where else, you know, maybe this has been affecting our application. Continue on through the replay. Looks like I've hit that a few times. So this one's interesting. Um, this, this is the dead click. So you'll notice I'm clicking on this card a bunch of times and nothing's happening. So what's really interesting about this is I would actually have no other way of knowing that this is happening unless I have some type of instrumentation that tells me how many times somebody has tried to register for this event. And I just run my own kind of count on, on how many people have registered for it. And I just derive the fact that nobody's registered for this dead click event, but I, I could just come in and look at the replay and see immediately, Hey, this isn't quite doing anything. I see a bunch of navigations. It's not navigating to the right place and I click on register. It's same thing. And nothing's actually happening. So I've just identified that there's an issue with the UI and it's something I'm gonna to have to take off and look into the code. So I get everything with a full lens here with the session replay. That's a segue into something else a little bit later else that we're excited to share. So this looks like this is a front end error, just a random, very bad error. This guy here. So again, I could just kind of click around and you, you get it through your breadcrumbs, you get it through your timeline, you get it through your issues, you can kind of see it all over. And then I think this is the final one where it's, um, yes, the blank screen of death. So this is kind of similar to the dead click situation where I'm not maybe completely aware that there's this bad UX experience, but I can now see it unfold um, right in front of me through session replay. So super helpful. Um, I find session replays invaluable uh, in, in terms of, you know, a, a dev tool that I use in my day-to-day -day work uh, and troubleshooting uh, particular um, issues. I, and again, like when issues do arise, I, I like to treat the session replay as, 
you know, we're, we're giving you an instruction manual on basically how this unfolded. You could see all the steps a user has taken to, to kind of reproduce an error. Uh, and we get it, we, you know, if you instrument your uh, application, you get it full stack. Um, so that's my session replay demo. Um, there's, there's a lot more information to, to take in and I encourage you to try it on your own uh, applications, but also feel free to go check out the help doc so you get a little bit more in-depth information. I'm not sure where Angela went. Disappeared. No problem. We'll carry on. Let me share my screen again. So um, one of the final pieces that I wanted to discuss was the what's coming soon. And so it, I had kind of alluded to this earlier, but there was two issues that kind of surfaced through um, what I call the dead click and then the blank screen of death. Um, and so these are kind of bad user experiences that you know we with Session Replay have the ability to kind of surface as an issue. And so what we're working on uh, most recently, and I think what I'm, I'm hoping will land soon I can't commit to a particular date, but Jasmine is, is on the call about uh, detecting bad user experiences. So we want to get replay issues an actual kind of curated issue that will surface through Sentry. So anytime that there's a, uh, a dead click or a slow, a slow click where, you know, a user is kind of just clicking on something and nothing's happening, we're, we're aiming to try and detect this type of behavior and then surface it as a, as a replay issue. So this dead click, slow click uh, issue is one of the first ones we're working on. The blank screen of death is another one where we're, we've been socializing the idea. Um, the work stream hasn't necessarily started for this. Um, there's a lot more work going on in the background uh, in regards to session replay, whether it be you know support for um, particular elements or you know a story around performance. I can't speak much based on what what the actual work we're uh, we do have in flight, but the one that I'm, we definitely have like the go ahead to share with is the replay issues. And I'm not sure if Jasmine wants to chime in maybe in the chat, if there's anything more, but this is kind of what's on the roadmap for, um, you know, Q2 and onwards. And Angela, I see you're back. Um, I'm just kind of taking that the helm here uh, of the slideshow, but we're on the Q&A. So I'm going to hand the hot seat back to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, and sorry about that. My computer decided to restart in the middle of this webinar, which is always great. Um, okay, thank you, Elias, for the awesome presentation. We're going to switch gears now. Um, and before I get started with the Q&A, um, I just want to mention, um, since there were a few questions in the chat, that this uh, webinar will be recorded and we will be sharing this out in the post-event email, which you should receive in your inbox if you've registered um, in 24 to 48 hours after this event. Um, so for folks who weren't able to join us today, or if you want to refer back to this webinar, um, check your inbox in the next day or two. Um, all right. So now we're going to switch over to um, our Q&A with our customer panel. Um, so we have three customers join, um, who have joined us today um, to talk through their experience uh, with Century Session Replay. So uh, first we'll do a round of intros um, and I'll, I'll just pick on uh, Josiah, you can go first. Um, tell us about you know, um, your role, your company, um yeah in a in a bit about yourself if you want to share a fun fact as well oh well hello everyone uh thanks for having me my name is josiah i work here at boost point uh, boost point is a social media and sms marketing platform for talent acquisition um taking all of the buzzwords out of that we just connect people with qualified talent uh, using the communication methods that we carry around in our pockets every day social media and texting um, we are a mean and lean development team uh, here, and 
Um, we wear a lot of hats. And so Sentry has allowed us, especially Sentry Replay, to swap those hats more efficiently um, and to wear them well. So it's an honor to be here and get to brag about you guys a little bit. It's really cool work. Awesome. Uh, ben, do you want to go next? Sure. Um, my name is Ben. Uh, thank you so much for having me. These are these are lots of fun to do. Uh, I work for Skillshark Software. We, at the moment, are only three developers, so a very tiny team. And we have quite a suite of uh, Sentry integrations up and running. What Skillshark does, if you can picture um, athlete evaluation, so like a coach standing there with the clipboard and the stopwatch trying to write notes down for tryouts or, or camps or evaluations, we've digitized that with a, uh, a mobile app and a web app to allow all that data entry. And then because we've done it digitally, we can do all kinds of uh, reporting and, and feedback and videos and comments and all kinds of stuff. So it's, it's neat stuff, but that's, uh, that's what the company does. So. Awesome. Uh, and Gus. Hi, I'm Gus. I'm CTO of Deep Brands. Um, I'm based in Scotland. Uh, Deep Brands is a global company where we develop many different products and sell to customers around the world in our own channels. So we don't do Amazon or other marketplaces, we're doing everything. So as any e-commerce businesses, if something goes wrong, customers don't complain, they just don't buy. And that's where Sentry comes in. We are a very small team of four developers and we're using Replay a lot to figure out if something is wrong. Awesome. Thank you all for the intros. Okay, so jumping in, we know that I think a lot of the um, folks on the call have heard of session replay in the context of, you know, um, maybe analytics um, or, you know, using dashboards and seeing the user experience to improve conversion rates, um, particularly for e-commerce. So um, we know that product teams, you know, marketing teams, um, can find session replay useful, but from an engineering standpoint, I'm curious to know how has session replay watching these user sessions um, with the dev tools, you know, um, within the replay view, how does that help you um, in your triaging and troubleshooting workflow as a developer? I can kick us off. Um... I'm sure we've all heard the phrase, well, it works fine on my machine. Um, we have a excellent customer success department, uh, very technically talented people um, who are also in Sentry Replay um, and get a lot of bug reports from users and will experience bugs themselves and will uh, yell across the room, hey, uh, we have something going on over on my machine and we can't reproduce it. Uh, so. Sentry Session Replay has kind of closed this technical gap uh, between uh, customer su success pointing at their screen and saying, hey, this is the error, I can see it, and us being able to look seamlessly at the dev tools, the network tag, uh, tab, the console logs, and being like, oh, okay, I see now technically under the hood what's going on. Um, and so it helps us translate between the user experience to what's going on uh, on the back end, basically. So, yeah. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go next again. Um, a lot of echoing from Josiah. What it's allowed us to do is all of that time that you spend debugging and trying to reproduce something and try to like recreate the conditions that it occurred. The replay and the tools that it gives just like trivializes that. So going from how do I approach this and how am I going to rec recreate this and is it is it specific? You just get to see and and move through that whole time frame and it greatly reduces the the like the time to where you actually get to write the three or four lines that fix it, which is not the hard part. It's getting to know what the problem is and it, it just arms you with so much more information. That's that's the part that's transformed it for us. I think I can echo what everyone said, but I can give an example just to incre uh, implement that is one case we had recently where we figured out a some error in a carousel. No one could replicate. 
And it took us a while to figure out in the recordings that users were swiping the direction that is not natural to. We only figured out because we had recordings of that because everyone tried and no one could replicate. Awesome. Yeah, uh, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, next question is, I'm curious how, if you can kind of walk us through what your Sentry workflow looks like with session replay. So we know there's a few ways to kind of, um, you know, navigate through Sentry. There's a lot of context in there. There's quite a few tabs on the left-hand nav. Um, how do you typically, or how, how do you use um, replay in your workflow? Um, can you kind of like walk us through those steps? And Josiah, feel free to kick us off again. Sure. Um, yeah, it's so flexible. We have multiple different entry points. Um, sometimes we will get a Slack from customer success saying, hey, can you look at this specific replay? Something went wrong here. Um, sometimes we're at home, off work. We get a notification that there's a sentry error. We pull up our phones. We look at the sentry error. And we're like, shoot, is this important to work on tonight before I get into work tomorrow? We'll scroll down. We'll look at the replay. And we're like, oh, OK, great. This isn't affecting this user's experience. It's kind of a benign error error currently. Um, and sometimes like we're releasing our new AI tool today, actually. And we're going to be using Sentry Replay a lot to be looking at this tool and how users are using it, kind of to echo what Gus said and to see like, are they using it the way we designed it or are they using it in a different manner? Um, and should we redesign a couple of things to make that user experience better? Yeah, and for myself, kind of similar again, we might see a theme here. Um, we'll get uh, new issue alerts through Slack uh, when a new issue occurs. And for us, when we go to that issue page in Sentry, the first stop is to go right to the replay. Um, to show us a little bit, like just get that context more to be like, okay, very, very seldom do you get to read the error message and know, oh yeah, I know what happened. Cause it's usually a little more complicated than that. And the replay gives you the tools to do that. Um, now with some of the new releases where there's uh, linking to backend issues and performance pieces, we'll probably have some other entryways into that. But I learned about that, you know, not too long ago. So that's pretty new that we haven't gotten to kind of test yet. And uh, in our case, pretty much also the same. We also do spend some time, I, I personally spend a lot of time during the day, just looking at the replays that also don't have any problem, just to see if everything is fine. And sometimes you catch some interesting things just from watching the ones that don't say anything. Awesome. So it sounds like there, it's it's valuable to be able to go into the error details page for a particular issue and then navigate directly to that replay um, to see you know how a user experienced that particular issue in the wild. But also, um, it, it it can be also helpful for just like browsing through sessions um, and and seeing what pops up. Maybe there's something that wasn't captured, um, an interesting insight that was surfaced uh, based on how the user um, navigated the page. So that's all great to hear. Okay, next question: Can you walk us through a specific example? of how you and your team use session replay um, to either confirm or resolve an issue. Feel free to jump in, whoever is ready. Oh, okay, I'll go for I'll go first this time. I got uh, I got one. So we had an issue come in and I think this was I had to think about it. Angela and Jasmine have, have heard this one. I think it was our first actual replay with an error in it, now that I think about it. So the issue came in, we got it through Slack, I went and looked, and it was a promise rejection. And I remember looking at it, and with all of our information for routing and, and source maps, I looked at it and went, huh? We don't have any promises anywhere near there. How on earth did this happen? And up in the top bar was the uh, the link to take you to the replay. So I said, ah, I'll go watch the replay. I went and watched the replay, and I got about 20 or 30 seconds in, 
and I immediately knew what the problem was. And I remember thinking about how long it would have taken me to debug that and retrace that and recreate it when what the issue was is on that page, it's a complicated page, excuse me, has a set of tabs. They went to a secondary tab and opened a pretty new modal. And on that modal, they didn't fill out all the fields. And when the validation fired, it's done through a promise, it bubbled up into the um, into the console and Sentry captured it. One of those fixes that took two lines to do that probably would have taken me an hour, a morning, so much longer than the 20 or the 30 second replay that I watched to just immediately be like, it just turned it into obvious. It went from how do I start to obvious in that 20 or 30 seconds on that page. And now I feel very spoiled where I'm like, I can't go back. <laughs> where without that kind of tooling, I'm like, oh, now I got to do it the hard way. And that's been like the, that, that was the wow moment was literally, I think the first replay with an issue that we got to just fix. And that, that was, has been our experience with it. So that, that's my example. <laughs> yeah, Ben, I think that um, you hit on a really important detail there, which is, you know, um, we've gotten this question before from other customers, which is, you know, I have the stack trace, I have the breadcrumbs. It seems I I can, tech, in theory, resolve that issue um, without, you know, watching an actual user session. But being able to actually watch that makes that issue very obvious. And you can right there visualize it and, and understand the root cause of that problem um, and be able to resolve it. And what you said um, would have taken hours now um, you you can know right away after watching the user session. So that's that is really awesome. Uh, Gus, do you want to share an example as well? I think the classic one is React suspense errors. They pop up everywhere, and when when you least expect, and you never know if it's something that is actually broken or not. So sometimes. The, I'll, every time the replays help us out and say, oh, that's broken. Oh, no, that's definitely not broken. It's just a hydration error. And that helps a lot. Uh, we thought there are things that are consequential from that. Uh, we are now working multi-language for a few shops. And hydration, suspense errors, they happen all the time. And we are able to look, oh, this piece is missing. Oh, this piece didn't hydrate. Oh, this is completely broken. It's widescreen. So which sometimes is the same error. Uh, that you get for every single one of them. But with replay, you can actually look in and at least shave a little bit uh, to find the right one. Absolutely. Yeah, that kind of brings me into the next question, which is there are certain uh, classes of errors, right, that are more uh, complex to figure out than others. Um, and it sounds like one of those complex errors that replay is um, particularly helpful for is hydration errors with Next.js. Um, are there any other classes of errors that um, you all can think of from the top of your head um, that, you know, replay might be helpful for? Yeah, um, <laughs> we will, uh, like any other web app, we integrate with a lot of services that are out of our control. And sometimes those services don't have the best documentation. Their error codes are kind of generic. And being able to see like when those errors pop up in our error logs um, to be like, OK, this is what this specific user did to get those errors from this other service that we integrate with. We sent what we expected to be the right packet. We can see that in the network tab um, did, you know, other service change their uh, what they expect from us um, or did something go wrong on our end with our front end or our back end so yeah when errors are out of your control and how they're responding being able to use session replay has helped us clear the air uh, very easily that's great okay uh let me move on to the next one oh 
before I move on completely, how about um, if anyone has an example of uh, a type of performance issue um, that replay um, has been helpful to resolve? So slowdowns, latency in your app. I think the network tab uh, helps a lot to figure that out. We actually have one ongoing issue where, where we found out uh, an API is taking too long to, to process and, and and it's run by a third party vendor. And they said, yeah, it might be your location, but with the replay tab, we can actually look at different ex user examples and show no, that's actually widespread and it gives us confidence to know what well, it's it's not a localized problem as well. It's a widespread problem where if we replicate or if you have a fast connection, but users are on a slow connection, sometimes like even simulating is not the same thing. That helps a lot as well. Absolutely. Awesome. Okay, and then final question. Um, we can do a quick round robin of this. What is your favorite dev tool feature within the replay view? I think I just started with my favorite, which was the network tab, absolutely. Yep, you, you get another vote for the new network tab. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's, yeah, it's exactly, just, it's all there. Just what was in the, the, the browser is now there with, in the replay. Yep, network tab. Um, I, I would also say network tab, uh, but I was also talking with my boss this morning and we were just exclaiming about how convenient it is to have all of the context for an error in one place. And you can jump from the replay to the error logs, to the breadcrumbs, to yeah, performance and everything. And it's invaluable how at your fingertips it all is. Awesome. Well, we love to hear it. Um, that means that our team is working on the right stuff um, to continue to make this product um, as useful as it can be for you all. So that concludes our Q&A session. Um, thank you all uh, for your time um, and joining us and sharing your experience with Session Replay. Uh, we appreciate you all. And Elias, do you want to move on to the next slide? Okay, so to wrap things up, um, we I just want to share a few resources uh, we have available uh, where you can learn more about Session Replay and also connect with us. Um, so first is our docs. Um, this will also be this will be um, shared in the post event email. Um, so don't worry, um, no need to like write down or take a screenshot of, of this right now, but um, you can head it over to our Sentry docs to learn more about um, how it works, how to set it up, how to configure all the good like privacy settings, um, all that good stuff is all available in our docs. Um, you can also check out our website. Um, we have a landing page specifically for session replay. Um, and we're pretty active um, our, on social, especially our engineering teams here at Century. So you can connect with us um, through GitHub, through our Twitter channel, um, and also through Discord. And then finally, uh, if you have any specific questions, um, you can email us at session-replay at century.io.